Okay, uh, so this lecture will cover what's known as SP2 hybridization. So we'll take a couple of examples to illustrate. So if we take that molecule and this molecule. So in both cases, so we have a central atom. with three things attached. And in this case, they will be sp2 hybridization, hybridized. Um, so last time we looked at CH4 with four things attached. So one way to figure out hybridization of something, so if it's sp3 attached, so s1 and p3, so then if we just add the superscripts, equals 4. So if you have four things attached, four atoms, or any combinations of atoms and lone pairs to make four, that would be sp3 hybridized. In this case, if you have three things attached, then it would be sp2 hybridized. So s1 and p2, and then if you add those superscripts together, you get three. So if three things attached needs to be sp2 hybridized, so take the s and two of the p orbitals. So if we go back to the same thing that we did for sp2, so if we take carbons 1s, it's 2s, and px, Py and 2pz. Oops. And then we ignore the core electrons since they don't participate in bonding. And we promote an electron. So each of carbon's valence shell orbitals has one electron each in them. Then in this case, if it's sp2 hybridized, that means we're going to take the s and only two of the p orbitals. So it doesn't matter which of the two p's you take. Um, you can take any of them because they're all equal in energy. For drawing purposes, it makes it easier to draw if we leave y alone and only hybridize x and z. So then we're still going to have a 2py orbital that's not hybridized. And then we're going to have three new hybridized orbitals out that are all equal in energy that are called sp2 orbitals. So you had four orbitals to begin with. Right, 2s, 2px, 2py, 2pz. And you still have four orbitals on carbon. It's just that now three of them are hybridized and one of them is not. So basically what we're doing again, we're taking the 2s, we're going to take 2px and 2pz. So if we try to keep the three-dimensional aspect of it, and we're going to mix them or hybridize them, which really means we're doing math. We're taking the equation for those three orbitals and mixing them together and getting three new equations out. And when we plot those equations graphically, um, they give you something like this. Again, you have a big lobe and a small lobe. So for all of the hybridizations, that's the way it works. You mix orbitals together, you get new equations, plot those equations, you get a new shape to an orbital. And for sp3, sp2, sp, they all basically have a big lobe and a small lobe. So as long as you draw it like that with a big lobe and a small lobe, I know, I'll know that you're drawing sp3, uh, sp2, or sp hybridized orbital. And again, we call it sp2 because we took s and we took two p orbitals. So mix three orbitals, got three new orbitals out. And what we want to do now is arrange on carbon to maximize distance between them. And if you want to maximize the distance between the three things, as we saw with the Vesper model, you put them trigonal planar, 120 degrees apart within the same plane. So we have a carbon atom. 
with three sp2 hybrids so a big lobe on one side small lobe on the other side of the nucleus and then so and then one going behind the piece of paper with a small lobe coming out so the we'll have a dotted line for the lobe going behind the paper and a solid wedge for the lobe coming out and then the other one will have the solid uh, one lobe coming towards you and then the small lobe going behind the piece of paper. <coughs> so this is for this molecule. So of course both carbons are identical in the structure so if one carbon is sp2 hybridized so is the other and it has exact same orbitals attached to it. Uh, let me, it's going to be on my waist so I'll get rid of that. So the other carbon looks identical to it, so it's just going to be the mirror reflection of it. So it's got an sp2 orbital going this way, the small one on the back side, and then an sp2 orbital going this way, behind the paper, with this big lobe in front of the paper, and then an sp2 with the big lobe coming out of the paper, and the small lobe going back. So that would be each carbon's three sp2 hybridized orbitals. <clears throat> and then, so we have four hydrogens. Well, so where are the four hydrogens attached? They're basically at the ends of the molecule, so they're going to be attached to, to four of these sp2 hybridized orbitals. So S orbital overlaps those four sp2s. So now basically what we've constructed is that bond, that bond, that bond, that bond, and one bond between the two carbons. And there's still another bond. So what does that other bond arise from? Well, so we still have a p orbital on carbon that we didn't sketch yet. So let's sketch carbon. So carbon's got a p orbital. Both carbons got an unhybridized PY orbital. And they both have one electron each. Right? One electron. And the three hybrids each has one electron. So that would be carbon's four valence electrons. So one electron there, one there, one there, and one there. And then hydrogen brings one electron. Okay, so that would be two, four, and there's one electron, of course, here and here in each of those sp2s as well. So that would be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve um, electrons. So C2H4, four times two, and hydrogen one times four will be twelve electrons. Okay, so these two p orbitals are close enough in space that they can overlap side to side. So basically that molecule would look like this. So the p orbitals, this model doesn't quite do it justice. In reality, those two p orbitals are close enough in space that they can overlap side to side. <clears throat> and then we have two hydrogens coming towards you. So that would be the solid lobe of the sp2 overlapping with hydrogen's s orbital and then two hydrogens going away from you, so that would be the dotted line sp2 orbital going behind the pa paper overlapping with these two hydrogens in the back. Okay, so side to side overlap. That type of bond is what's known as a pi bond and end to end overlap make what's called a sigma bond so this would be a pi bond and this would be a sigma bond since those, P or, those sp2s overlap end to end so this is an sp2 overlapping an sp2 end to end so make a pi bond and this is a p orbital overlapping a p orbital side to side to make a so the sp2, sp2 is a sigma bond, the p to p side to side is a pi bond. 
and then these would be sigma bonds as well. So for this molecule it has one, two, three, four, five sigma bonds, and then one the other, one of the lines between the two carbons is representing the pi bond. Okay, so if we had BH3, so any atom that's sp2 hybridized looks exactly like this. It's got a central atom with three sp2 hybrids and then an unhybridized p orbital. So if this was BH3, you would have an sp2. An sp2. With one electron there, one electron there, because boron's got three valence electrons. sp2 with one electron and then hydrogen would bring one electron alright so BH3 has boron's got three valence electrons it's in group three hydrogen brings one so you only have six electrons so that's your six electrons so that's all of the um, bonds within the molecule but then boron still has an unhybridized p orbital it's just got no electrons in it, so BH3 is a fairly reactive molecule because it can accept more electrons. <clears throat> okay, so there are, and so then the bond angles in this molecule, right, will be a 120 degrees, or in the molecule with the double bond. Each of these bond angles from hydrogen to carbon to carbon would be approximately 120 degrees, not perfect because it's not perfectly symmetrical molecule. So there are consequences to having pi bonds. So if we had this molecule, for example, Versus that molecule, so the same atoms, they're both C2, CO2, H2, and they're attached in the same way, in that you have chlorine, carbon, carbon, chlorine, or chlorine, carbon, carbon, chlorine. Um, this is called the cis isomer, and this is called the trans isomer. And so these two molecules are different. You can synthesize them, put them in a bottle, and they will not convert in between each other. And that's, and that's because of the pi bond. Right, so to convert one molecule to the other, um, let's change this molecule right quick. Okay, so the consequences of the pi bond is that you don't have free rotation. see that in the model so if, if we take so if this was the um, cis isomer right we have chlorine carbon carbon chlorine on the same side and hydrogen carbon carbon hydrogen on the same side if you wanted to go with the trans isomer you would have to rotate around that carbon carbon bond and so now you would have chlorine carbon carbon chlorine opposite and hydrogen hyd carbon carbon hydrogen opposite of each other so rotating around the pi bond requires too much energy than available to the molecule. Right, why does it require a lot of energy? Because if you rotate around the bond, so if we just go 90 degrees for example, uh, then you can see we've now broke the pi bond because now the p orbitals don't overlap with anything. So in order to rotate around the pi bond, you would have to you would have to break the pi bond and that requires too much energy. So this molecule then is static. It can't rotate around the pi bond. So you can synthesize that molecule and you can synthesize that molecule and they will not interconvert in between each other. So these type of molecules um, differ spatially. So they're a type of isomer. What kind of isomer are they? They are stereo isomers. If you remember, stereo isomers are molecules that differ three-dimensionally and nothing else. So these molecules, um, because they're stereo isomers, there can be consequences to that. 
uh, they can have different physical properties. Uh, they can also have different biological activities. And so there is an example of a molecule that uh, cis versus trans double bond, a pharmaceutical agent where one of them is an anti-cancer agent again and one of them is, and the other one is not. So they can have big differences in biological properties because of the uh, spatial arrangement around a double bond as well.